be doing a quick Premiere Pro tutorial on how to set up your sequence, import clips and stitch them together. So the first thing you want to do is go to a folder and you want to import all of your clips that you want to edit together into a folder. So here I have two clips that I took from the snow that we had yesterday. So what you want to do next when you have your clips in the folder, you want to open Premiere Pro. Then you want to go to new project and you want to call your project a name. So I'm going to call my project Snow. So the location here that you save your project to is really, really important because the project file is what will hold all the information of the edits that you've done on the project. And it will also identify where the clips that you've put in the project are also. So what you want to do is go to browse, never just save it um, there and then go to browse and up will come all of your folder. So I'm going to go into snow and save it to the same snow folder so that it's easy to find. Then you want to press OK and it should be saved like this here. So when you open Premiere Pro, your interface should look like this. So what you wanna do is go to your folder where your clips are and you have to drag them down to this box that says import media to start. Once the clips are imported into this little window here on the left hand side, you can quickly scrub to the thumbnail just to see that it's the right clip, etc. So what you want to do now is create a sequence so that you can edit these clips together. So what you want to do is go to File, New and Sequence. You can also on Max shortcut Command N. So your sequence settings are really important because this is where you want to figure out what frame size that you want your video to be in. So when you click on new sequence, this is what should pop up. Go into settings and your time, um, go to time base first. Most videos are shot in 25 frames per second. So I'd leave it at 25 frames per second if it's the normal speed. Then you want to go into frame size here. So your frame size is what size you want the video to be basically. Normal horizontal TV is 1920 by 1080. So that will give you a panel that you can view horizontally. If you want to flip that and make a video that is portrait, you flip the numbers. So you put frame size 1080 by 1920 and it'll make it portrait. And you want to leave everything else as is. Then at the bottom you can put the sequence name. So I'm going to put snow day. And then you press OK. Now what will happen is your sequence comes up on the right hand side and on top of that is your display box so you can keep track of what you are actually doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the two clips on the left and drag them onto the sequence. Now it'll ask you if you want to match the sequence settings to your clip settings. You can either do this or leave them as is. I'm going to keep the existing settings. So I'll zoom in here for you. So on the timeline you have two types of tracks. You have tracks that have the letter V and A. So A is the, your audio tracks and V are your video tracks. So A, as you can see here, have M and S symbols. So the S, if you click that and you've layered a couple of videos together, that will only play that track's audio and the rest will be silenced. Or you can mute a couple of them if you have layered a couple of videos. So the little I here as well, you can toggle that on and off and that will turn on and off that layer. Premiere Pro works similarly to Photoshop or other Adobe products where you're working with blocks and layers. So anything on the top is the thing that's at the forefront of the video. So the first thing I want to do is add a transition at the start because I want it to kind of fade in slowly. I don't want the clip just to start as is. So what you want to do is you want to go and look at the left panel here on the bottom and go to effects. In the search box you can search for transitions. So I'm going to search for dip to black and here you have it. And to add an effect to a video you drag that effect onto the clip as so. So now when you play it, it'll dip in. The next thing I want to do is add a title to this video. So what you want to do is you want to go to the, this panel here that have these icons and press the type to. Or you can also press T on your keyboard. This brings up a different type of cursor which you can drag to create a text box. Once you create this text box, there should be settings on the left that allow you to change the size and the font. I'm going to increase the font size go back to my text box and just click snow. So like I said before, Premiere Pro sequences work very much the same as layers. So the thing at the top is what will be at the forefront of your video. So here we can see we have a snow layer. So for example, if I drag the video on top of the snow layer, then the snow goes missing because the title is behind that clip. So what you want to do is make sure that your text clip is at the top of the sequence. What if I want to shorten 
the next clip and I don't want it to be that long. What you want to do then is you want to go back to the panel with the icons on the left of the sequence and click the razor tool. So what this allows you to do is go right into the clips and click wherever you would like to cut your clip. So for example, if I want to cut it here and the audio as well, you can then select that and backspace. And that means you have trimmed your clip down. And then if you click the empty space and the backspace, it'll bring your clips together. A quick tip if you want to cut up clips really quickly is a shortcut to select the clip. Make sure the blue line is where you want to chop the clip up and then you press command K and it splits them. So you can do that as well instead of using the razor tool. So what if you want to transition from one clip to the other without just a straight cut and you want a nice smooth transition? Well, you want to go back to your panel on the left and go into your search bar, search transitions, and here you'll find a video transitions folder. And for example, I'm gonna choose crosses of, and what you wanna do is drag it from the left onto your sequence onto the clip you want to transition from to. And now what you get is you get your title and then a transition, a nice smooth transition into your next clip. Dragging to just the length also applies to this where you can drag the transition to make it a very short transition. Or if you want to lengthen it, you can do so. And now if you want to just add a dip to black to the end, so a nice little transition to finish out the video, you can do so here. Now the video looks like this as a whole. So you've got your title, your dip to black, your cross dissolve into your next clip, a nice clip, and then you're finishing on a dip to black. So firstly, if you're really happy with your video and how it's going, make sure to save along the way. So you can press Command S to save project or file and press save. That is not exporting the project for you, but what it's doing is it's saving all of your edits to date so that if, for example, the application crashes, you're not gonna lose all your hard work. But if you want to export your video, you go to File, Export, Media. After you've clicked export, this is the panel that will pop up. It looks intimidating, but it's actually not bad at all. The first thing you want to pay attention to is the first option that says format. Usually when you're exporting a video, it's in H.264 mode, which is a file format or a codec that's really compatible with most softwares. So you can play it back on a phone, play it back on social media, etc. Otherwise, you can also export it as a JPEG if you'd like a photo or a PNG or a QuickTime. QuickTime is more exclusive to the Apple ecosystem, but I usually keep it at H.264 just to be safe. So then the next setting, you want to match source high bitrate or medium bitrate. So the difference between these two is that match source high bitrate will export it in the highest quality that it possibly can. But if you're trying to, for example, sending on a draft of something that you know isn't going to be the final cut, you can press medium bitrate. It'll still be really, really clear, but it just won't be the crystal clear quality that your final video will be. So then what you want to do is output name. So this is where you are going to choose where you're going to export your video to. So I didn't know this for ages, but if you click on your title, so once you click on your title, up will pop your file storage. So basically I'm gonna go back into where I have my Snowdake folder and save the export here as snow day call it snow day export and press save and then what you want to do is press export here and then the video will export in its own time so what we learned here today is some file management and um, setting up a sequence importing your clips into the sequence chopping them and stitching them together with a title i hope that this helped and you learned something from today's tutorial and have a nice day